Using death as more than just a quick reset button is something that's been happening in games for decades. First person shooters, RPGs, MMOs, fantasy, zombies, side scrolling, cyberpunk, science fiction, and of course, demon souls. It's all around us. Star Citizen is no different. Death of a Spaceman is a concept that has been ingrained in the vision of the game since as early as 2013. And while it will be a while before the full mechanic is implemented into the game, we'll be seeing some sweeping changes to medical gameplay coming up in the next update. So let's talk about 315's medical gameplay, this permadeath concept, and why it's not actually permadeath. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And thanks to my newest supporters, Punji Stick, Luigi509, Alvar Kresh, and Light. Star Citizen is a game meant to reward you for making the right choice for your situation, no matter what you're doing. As a game based on skill and know-how, there won't be a chance to rank up your character to be the best at your job. It'll be based on the decisions that you and your crew make. But in order to deliver the satisfactory experience of being rewarded for good decisions, you also need to feel the losses of your bad ones. And since this game is running systemically, there needs to be a system that manages the big and escapable. Death. Demon's Souls is a difficult game. But what makes it difficult isn't just the gameplay itself, it's also the risk you inherit while playing it. See, if you're killed, you lose what you're carrying and have to go retrieve it. This is actually more a function of the inventory system, but it also affects other things you've collected. Regardless, this risk leads players to place much more importance and value on the concept of life and death. Because the possibility of loss can act as a deterrent, a motivator, or a reward. In a fairly straightforward action-adventure fantasy fighting game, this is a fantastic addition and helps to build out the game and the genre as a whole. But in a dynamic, evolving, galaxy-wide MMO, this sort of feature can be integral to making sure the underlying supply and demand and overall economy makes sense. Permadeath is a thing in Star Citizen, but it might be different than what you're thinking. While you can die permanently in-game, you won't, at any point, ever lose all of your progress. This is a big worry that comes with permadeath, and it should be the first line after the big text. You can lose your character, but technically, you'll never have to lose the majority of what you've built up to that point. Your progress will be determined by your reputation, your belongings, and your ship. The latter two can be insured and replaced for a small fee, if they do happen to be destroyed or stolen, or they can be passed down to your next player with tax. Your reputation, on the other hand, will degrade by some amount, just as it might if you were replacing your parents in their place of work in real life. Obviously, you have the background and the teachings that your parents provided, but you lack the experience, and people won't take that as a one-to-one -one replacement. That could mean minors won't consider you the master that your parents were, and require you to prove yourself on additional jobs. Or maybe security forces won't consider you a smuggler like your parents were, and won't slap a bounty on your head just for being related. It could be good or bad, and these setbacks will provide great natural points for players to pivot their playstyle, find something new to do, or self-motivate to not die again and further degrade your reputation. If this all still makes you nervous, keep in mind that in order to reach this point, you'll have to die at least five times prior before finally reaching that last life where everything gets passed on. We don't know what the exact number of these mini lives will be, but I think it will be more than five. And while you may be somebody who goes into battle and has died several times, you've also got some choices that allow you to add more of these lives back. That, however, doesn't change the fact that you're dying. A lot. At this point, many of your limbs, and even maybe an eye, have had to be replaced by cybernetics that continue to allow you to play the game the same way as before. Even if you decided to go with the run down option. And if you needed more additional steps in between your lovely gameplay and the possibility of death, it's good to know that these multiple deaths that you'll have to work through won't be easy to achieve on their own in the first place. Gameplay director Richard Tyrer has stated multiple times that all of these gunshots, falls, road kills, and other ways you die won't actually kill you anymore. Approximately 99% of the times you have normally died, outside of glitches, 
will no longer kill you. Pretty much 99% of the times where you would have died in Star Citizen before, now you go into a down state. And a down state is a unconscious, incapacitated state that allows other players to come and rescue you. So any time where you would have probably died in Star Citizen, or should I say 99% of the times, because there is going to be a 1% and I'll explain that in a minute. Most of the times where you would have died, now you would go into the down state. So getting to this point of no return after five plus lives lost isn't going to be easy. Even if your ship is blown up, which is actually not meant to happen very often due to the way physical damage will allow ships to break apart. That is a topic for a future video, however. The best parallel I can think of for this system is Altered Carbon. In this show on Netflix, the body acts mainly as an avatar, a representation of the actual person, while the real personality, memories, and traits live on something called a stack. Now for people like the citizens of the Verse and Star Citizen, this could mean immortality, as you can switch between different bodies and maintain all of your belongings and what makes you, you. In Star Citizen, the true character is your actual profile, which will never be lost. As you progress through these mini lives, the overall character that represents you will age and be adjusted to show the progress that you've made. But much like these other games we've talked about today, the system is meant to place more importance on decision making and the way that players experience the game. And if you're wondering about crashes or disconnects, they do have a possible solution for that that actually sounds pretty nice. But I'll point you towards the actual Death of a Spaceman document that you can read down in the video description for more. Everything that you do read is old information, and everything that I'm telling you can change over time, as this is a game in development. But let's stop talking about the future. Death of a Spaceman is a mechanic that is going to require a long period of supporting features getting implemented. Alpha 315 is going to introduce the medical system as the newest of the bunch. So let's talk about how that's going to affect the game for you right now, and how it's going to start leading us towards Death of a Spaceman. As a core part of the game, the medical system is a profession that everyone will need to dip into. Unlike mining, salvage, refining, or even farming, the medical system must be easy enough to pick up on your first day but deep enough for players to spend all of their time specializing in it. That's not an easy task. So the system has been set up to be deep and scalable, but also as easy as a single button press. The most basic function in the medical system is that button press, the MediPen, which you can use to stab into yourself to regenerate some health. This is like many other games, but that's about as far as you go before getting more complex. The tools you will use as of 2021 besides that initial MediPen are the multi-tool and the dedicated medical tool. But before we look at these tools, let's touch briefly on the drug scene in Star Citizen. There is a black market in Star Citizen, and it's set to expand in major ways. Smuggling and piracy are no small part of this game, but all of those drugs that people will be making money off of shipping to and from different systems and planets have other uses. With medical gameplay, players will finally have more reason to remember these drugs, as each one has a different effect on the body and will be needed for different injuries. These injuries will be semi-permanent and only able to be healed by a proper medical facility, but each of the five drugs being introduced in the first implementation of this system will allow you to lessen the active nerf that that injury is applying to your movements or actions. And just as a small amount of the drug can be a great time, too much of it can cause issues like you'd expect. In order to avoid these regrettable decisions, you'll be able to monitor your blood drug level. And besides these MediPens, the medical attachment for the medical tool and the multi-tool itself will both also allow you to scan a player and determine what's wrong with them and the medical tool alone will be able to balance those drug levels for you to best heal your patient. This builds a quick three-tier system of medical gameplay with the tools and potential to scale in several ways, and does a lot to improve from the previous system. Now, players will be able to help each other in situations when one has no medpens and no time to transfer some. Players won't be dying as much and therefore will be losing their progress less, as others can pick them up in situations which previously would have killed them and new options for missions and tasks now exist for people interested in medical gameplay. Overall, it seems to be a great improvement, 
And while many want to see more complexity built in with things like cuts, lacerations, and more intensive wound treating, the majority of viewers are happy with the progress right now. And that brings us back to the overall goal of bringing importance to death. Demon Souls takes from you whenever you die, leaving you aware of the decisions you're making and reminding you to pay attention. While it wasn't the only game to do this, it heavily enforced Chris's belief that death needs to add value to the experience. Choice continues to be one of the greatest strengths in the way Star Citizen is being built. And when anything can happen, from stumbling across a mining deposit to getting spaced from your own ship, those choices are meant to matter more. This is not your typical permadeath system. This is a reset button that allows players to see a passage of time and the many effects that can come from the most catastrophic choices. In being a reset button, it allows you to determine your profile and stats while essentially starting a new character with an extra boost starting you on your next story. In my opinion, that's the best possible way to play a game without a character-based progression system. And while it won't be perfect, I imagine, I look forward to its development in the future. And only time will tell if it can be implemented and tweaked in order to bring a better experience to all players. All of these in-depth systems in Star Citizen have a lot of information shared about them in different ways at different times. And much like permadeath, they can be a little confusing to understand. I'm aiming to provide the easiest summaries to help you understand all of these features and Star Citizen as a whole. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing here to keep up with all the development as well as my cinematic videos, my update reviews, and my gameplay. You can also catch me live occasionally on my second YouTube channel full of additional gameplay and videos, or on my Twitch channel linked down below. And if you'd like to win a ship or two, you can find the ship giveaways I'm hosting in the video description or over on my Twitch channel as well. Finally, these videos are made possible by my supporters. If you'd like to help me improve these productions and eventually make more content, you can join my Patreon down below. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, Ken Garcia, Valiant15, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Dasek, Guilty Conscious, ExtremeTuber7, El Gordo, Jarzy, Miku, Jin, and Bilal Eliasem.